Basic Kitchen in Charleston. The Restaurant Review. Have you ever finished a meal and been at a loss for words because of how wonderful the food was? Like a song that moves you to tears, it can be a struggle to get down on paper what you're thinking and feeling. Sometimes you almost feel as if you should write a love letter. Many times a restaurant review is based on one visit. Well, what I am going to attempt to express is based on many visits to a place called Basic Kitchen, located at 82 Wentworth Street in Charleston, South Carolina. Like most relationships, it was chance or fate. It was a few summers ago, on an improbably hot day, even for the Carolinas. Seeking water and sustenance, Basic Kitchen looked like just the laid-back place to get out of the sun and fuel up. I've since lost track of how many visits, but I can promise you, I've eaten everything on the menu. The level of quality enjoyed has been unlike most culinary experiences. Instead of writing about one visit, I'm going to give you my tour of the entire menu and my experiences. Here is my honest review of Basic Kitchen. Usually the first thing you encounter at a restaurant is a person. Every interaction has felt like it was with someone who wanted to be there. The hosts, servers, and bartenders at Basic Kitchen have always been very sweet. I'll mention a few names. Morgan, Jack, and tall surfer guy. I think it's Robert. Please forgive me that I can't recall your name. It won't happen again. Nobody has even come close to anything remotely like pretentiousness. Now, the food is the star of this review, so let's get started, shall we? The small plates are some of the best of what Basic has to offer. You'd be missing out if you went right into the big plates. I've had the collie wings the most. One time we came in and got two orders. The combination of buffalo sauce with the cashew ranch dipping sauce is blissful. You can even request they be made vegan. They make great sweet potato fries that also come with that great dipping sauce. The pistachio beet dip is really good and refreshing. It's definitely worth trying. Speaking of refreshing, last week I tried the new chilled cucumber soup. It was just the right thing to get a meal started after a long day of strolling in the southern humidity. Do I have a favorite first course? Of course. The corn ribs are out of this world good. They come with a dry rub and what they call Alabama barbecue sauce. It's similar to some of the Mexican street corn I've had. The corn ribs are so delicious that it's hard to eat them slow. My suggestion, be mindful. If you could only go once, that's the small plate I'd get. They have two salads, the vegan Caesar and the green salad. You can't be disappointed with either one. Interesting, refreshing, and innovative describes both of these menu gems. Glancing around the restaurant, it seems like both of the salads are popular with the diners. The vegan Caesar has a variety of textures, and the green salad comes with a vegan goddess dressing that I just love. Now let's get into the big plates. All of these items are hard to compare because they are executed so pristinely. I've restrained myself from hugging strangers or the server. The first thing I ever tried was the good burger. It's a vegetable patty that they serve with harissa cabbage slaw. I was impressed, and it was one of several meat-free meals I had at Basic Kitchen. As a meat eater, I never felt like I was missing anything. So I went into Basic Kitchen on a past birthday and decided to ask the server about the Naughty Burger, which uses grass-fed beef. I asked her what she thought. She said, A lot of people say it's the best burger they've ever had get out, I thought. Maybe she was just saying that, right? Soon I was a believer. Having had some great burgers in Charleston, the Naughty Burger shot right to the top of the list. I actually came back the next day to get another one. I'm a burger lover, and it is really wonderful, one of the best I've had in the South. What about the chicken or cauliflower schnitzel? I've had it both ways, and it's creative, interesting, and tasty. They serve it with harissa potatoes, red peppers, pomegranate, and a little pecorino cheese. Very impressive. The market fish is fresh and to die for. It was buttery, juicy, and I really loved how the peach salsa, cilantro, and citrus all come together. Is this my favorite of the big plates? That's a tough question. I would say yes, but last night they had a special that lived up to the distinction, special. 
It was the corn gnocchi. Whoa, baby. Served with chanterelle mushrooms, little strips of pecorino cheese, and a parsley pistu. The waiter kindly told me that pistu, not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, is the lesser known French cousin of pesto. He also let me know that there was enough for one portion. I came in an hour before closing time and believe fate was kind to me. I didn't say much during the main course, as I slowly savored the corn gnocchi, but finally had to ask, who is the chef who came up with such a marvelous thing? Our guy smirked as if to say, I know, brother, you've got it bad. Charlie Layton, he said. Then he smiled a little more. I swear the server was joining me in admiration. So Charlie Layton, hats off. Okay, let's get into the bowls. Lots of good stuff awaits you there. The basic bowl is a vegetarian dish, but if you so desired, you could add chicken or salmon. They also offer avocado or a wishbone egg, which I've added to their salads and their bowls. Note to self, I'd like to try to add the egg to one of the burgers. The basic bowl leaves you feeling satisfied, but feeling really good about your decision. The way the chimichurri complements the sweet potato, grains, and the chickpeas lets you know that whoever created this dish spent a lot of time trying to get it right. It's delicious. Then there's the curry bowl. I do love a good curry. It's a light but gratifying dish with tofu, pickled onions, and a little cilantro. I've noticed subtle changes in the flavor here and there, but it always hits the spot. The only item from the bowls that I would only deem as good, but not necessarily exceptional, is the spring pasta. I liked it and appreciated the garlic chili confit. I only tried it once, but it didn't tantalize me to the extent of the other dishes, like the steak and soba noodle bowl. Along with the basic bowl, this item is one of the rulers of the menu. They use hanger steak. The ginger dressing is flavorful, but not overpowering. When I got the steak and soba noodle bowl, I found myself yet again being in a state of shock at the tremendous standards they set for themselves. If you're thinking about ending your meal with a dessert, they've got two options. The honey pie I had high hopes for, but is not a favorite. At $14, it is really the only menu item that I thought could be more. I love pie, but the piece I shared was the only time I felt a tad disappointed. However, the Carolina Gold Rice Pudding more than makes up for it. It is the best rice pudding I've had to date. It is a very generous portion and is drizzled with some delectable local honey and topped with fresh berries. My friend Kobe Glass, who is a licensed Charleston tour guide and Palmetto Guild member, once told me, the Confederate jasmine that blooms in April and May smells like a root beer float. Now, I may not have the sharpest pal in the world, but I think I do okay. Believe me when I tell you that I could taste in the honey just a hint of what Kobe so precisely described about the smell of the jasmine. I'm almost certain you'll love the Carolina Gold Rice Pudding. It's the perfect way to end your time at Basic Kitchen. What about the bar, you ask? I've had a few cold beverages at Basic. They make interesting cocktails if you want something new they dreamed up. I've also ordered something classic like a martini or Manhattan. The questions that they ask let you know they're taking your drink seriously. They've also got a good selection of beer, including some locally made options. Eating at Basic Kitchen has made any day that I went there even better. In some ways, it feels like stepping into the 70s. I wasn't around for that decade, but it seems like they were influenced by it, both in their decor and attitude. Looking at the wall, you may notice these words, keep exploring. It doesn't just apply to the world, but also what you eat. Now, I'm not a gourmand. I think of myself as an eater, but the folks at Basic managed to capture the adventuresome experience of exploration and make it their raison d'etre. Their slogan, cleaner fuel, longer adventures, is understood when you say goodbye and walk out into the street. My humble suggestion is to think about someone you'd like to share this experience with and invite them. Maybe it's a friend, something more, or someone you'd like to get to know better. What would it be like to see their face light up when they experience this special place modestly called Basic Kitchen? It's something you'll remember and they will too. I wish you a great meal and maybe some memories.